hello and welcome back to another video if you've not been here before then hello my name's Jo uh, this is Lockdown Art and Beyond um, we're at that time of the month where I get a chance to do the scroller challenge this is September's box um, which was delayed and then Inktober Schooltober any other Toby you can think of has taken over as well so I found a spare few minutes to kind of have a go see what we can create um let's just have a quick recap i unboxed the scroller box in my last video i'll put the link below so you can check that out scroller box monthly subscription box in the uk um mystery art supplies and then they give you a challenge of something to create so let's remind ourselves about this one so we got the Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen Dual Markers. Got five colours in there. We've got the Frisk A5 cartridge paper. A Derwent eraser. A what was it? Lyra pencil, yeah. And it was 3B. I don't know if you can see. And then we had our featured artist who was T Juristic. I really hope I'm saying it wrong. If I'm right, if, if I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. I'll scroll a challenge, which we'll go back to in a second. Sticker, scroll a zine, and there was a sweet in there, but that is long gone now. Okay, so put those bits aside for the time being. Put our paper there. Remind ourselves of the scroll challenge, which is fascinating folklore. So I've had quite a bit of fun researching this. Um, Lots of different things that I found. Um, this is kind of stuff I like, so it's made it a little bit easier in some ways. But also, other ways, difficult to pin down what exactly what I wanted to do. But I have decided to go with something from Japanese folklore, which is a kitsun. Um, and if I can work out my editing, I will put a picture up in the corner, somewhere here. Um, and it is a fox spirit, depends where you, what you read about it, um, and it has many tales depending on how old and wise it is, and it also comes in different kind of, um, I can't think of the right word, but you get like fi fire, water, that kind of thing, so I thought, I'm definitely going to try and do one, I may get onto a second, because we got different colours and I'm definitely going to try and do the fire one. But I think the blue and the green may suit a more earthy one. So let's see how we get one. I have got some reference images in front of me. I won't show them because I don't have... It's not mine to show. Um, and I don't want to kind of breach copyright and things. Okay, let's take out my tester sheet from last time. Looking at all the different colours. Let's kind of try and get some drawing done. Put that all a basic kind of shape. I'm trying to work out how to do this. I think I'm going to go portrait. And I think I'm definitely going to try and do one on one piece and maybe one on another if possible. So we need our kind of basic fox shape. I might have to keep kind of stopping the screen from going off. And I don't like that already, so let's rub this out and start again. <laughs> actually really not raising as I want it to but we'll see how we go
I don't know how much you like me talking during these videos or if you just rather I fast forwarded and just got on with the artwork. Maybe you could let me know. Oh, this is not working out as well as I hoped it would. Yeah, I keep going wrong with how I want this. Obviously, kind of like it doesn't really matter if the pencil drawing is not quite right because most of what I'm going to be doing is in the markers. And we have the most important bit, which is the tail. So Kitson can apparently have up to nine tails. Um, and different stories say different things about them. So one was um, that they get a new one every hundred years. So that means they lived kind of a thousand years old. Um, but yeah, the tails are basically there to show kind of wisdom of the fox spirit. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of like basic. And let's see how we get on here. So we're kind of going to go for the fiery. And I liked how the red and the orange mixed together. So I'm going to put some basic kind of orange down first. Now these are the jewel tip. So we have got like a brush nib. And we've also got like a, they say fine liner, but that is one thick fine liner. I am going to work more with the brush nibs, I think. If I can get them undone again. Put the lid there. Okay, so I'm going to start on the background, like the tails. And come forward, I think that's the plan anyway. And also, they didn't give us black, so we have to make do with the brown, dark sepia, which actually isn't too bad. And from what I remember, these markers did the paper even kind of kept pretty well with the markers. And this is kind of the colour you kind of expect a fox to be almost in a picture. And get the furry element on there as well. Oh, that went further than I intended. Oh well. Might extend that tail. Why am I doing it? Oh. It's not going to plant me just yet. This tail down the front. But we can fix it. Everything's fixable. <laughs>
suddenly notice something sometimes, don't you? You're like, oh, I should have done that. Well, these are water-based from what I remember. So they say you can use, like, a paintbrush and some water with them. But going on the fact we didn't get given one with the scrawler pots, I'm not going to try that at this point. the lid back on for the moment. Alright, let's grab the red for a bit. So let's start with one's a bit drier. Go back at it a bit with the orange. It's not quite how I want it to be. Oh, it's still wet. It's quite good. I mean, you can kind of get rid of what you don't want on there afterwards. I mean, you've got to be careful because the paper does start to tear up a little bit. Maybe just put a few stripes on. And kind of merge it. Yeah, I quite like the effect that's having. I guess that's the joy of water-based markers at this point. The thing is you have to do it at the time because these are permanent when dry, I think they said. Don't quote me, I will check in a second. Or I might just put it underneath, wherever they are. Because I will probably forget. So I'm getting quite a lot come off of the paper coming off at the moment. So I will have to kind of tidy that up. I don't think it's bed through. No, it's not bed through, which is pretty good.
too much there. Eh? We'll blend it in. Okay, so that's the basics of the tail done, I think. Let that dry a little bit. I want to just check what the GSM on this is. Yeah, 180, it's not the most. Probably 200, 220 might have been better. I realise I'm probably just putting my head in the way and the camera's falling slightly. get those bits of paper off, just clean those, the markers up, put the lid on the right way around, that's the fine way of now I can't remember how I got this kind of colour, I think it's the blue and the red, so I'm going to just try it again. It was blue first, actually. Yeah. It's going over wet blue and then with the red. That's kind of what I'm going to try and do around the... The, the fox as well. Um... some basic lines in. I'm not going to colour the whole fox in, I don't think. A lot of them in the research I did had like a white body anyway. So I'm not too bothered. So let me get a bit of more that blue up. got lids everywhere at the moment. So I'm gonna go with the dark sepia for a bit. I think we'll go with a fine end of it. Which probably is what I should have done there, but never mind. I mean to bring the features out a bit. There's much debate kind of about these as well, whether they were good spirits or bad spirits. So, time to make up your mind. Okay, so let's, I'm going to outline the tail. 
I'm kind of having the dark sepia as opposed to black. It does make it kind of sit quite nicely. Let's see, I've ruined it by putting orange there. You, I don't know if you can see the paper's kind of buckling a bit as well, which is annoying, but not much you can do when you're putting this much ink on it. We may have a cat invade in a minute. I know this looks a bit kind of rough and ready, but it's actually kind of growing on me, this kind of quite relaxed style. I could spend a lot longer on this, I think. Getting like the basics down and details in, and I probably will kind of do a bit more of that as we go along. So I'm not saying this is anywhere near finished. I think I am going to add some orange to the body, but not a lot. I might use the fine liner as opposed to the brush nib. Yeah, see, I said it could be fixed. <laughs> Bring back the orange. Yeah, actually that's quite good. Kind of for a furry texture. And I'm not worried about the white showing through on this because actually I think it adds to it, but that's my opinion. I think a lot of times people think, oh, you must have solid colour. Or it will look messy. Maybe it does, but it also sometimes it gives it a bit of character. When you've got limited supplies as well. So that's what we've got so far. 
now I realise I haven't used the green. I'm gonna think add some kind of background -y type bits. Um I'll just have a think what I'm gonna do. So I think I'm gonna just get some green bits kind of it's quite offensive actually that green is quite bright. Can I mix it with something to make it more muted? I will add more detail in, I think, as I go along. I want just kind of a tree y type background at the top. I guess I could have done some sky as well. But... Maybe we'll do like a lake in front or something. That's how kind of greeny background. Um, let's hope that's the right lid. I can add some kind of details in. Might use them as a sepia for this as well. Actually, they might be better. I've got some kind of tree-ish kind of shapes in there. And go back and see what else we can create with this.
dark and then click the sat round. I think because it would kind of be more of a furry floor maybe, it's what's coming off the kitchen. And then we might put a pool in front maybe. Kind of make it like it's sitting on a pool in the middle of the like a lake even. I said everything can be fixed. across what this is. Maybe some green in the blue. If in doubt, use your finger. <laughs> Lovely. Just to soften it a bit. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it at that, and I am just going to stick with doing the one, because um, I've managed to get all the colours in there as well. Um, I'm quite actually quite happy with that. So that is my um, one for this, this month's spoiler challenge, or oh, fascinating folklore. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, please like, subscribe, share. Um, all my social media links will be down below, as will be the unboxing video. Um, and yeah, I think that's all for now, and I will see you soon with another video. Take care.